two channel listeners. Thank you for coming back and tuning in for what's going to be episode number eight this week. I hope you all have seatbelts strapped to them chairs that you're in, and I hope that you strapped yourself in real good now because I'll tell you what, this here episode number eight is going to be something else. I've stumbled onto and opened up a can of worms. I'm telling you what, this digital formats that uh, I've been playing around with these last couple of weeks. Been doing a lot of research and there's a lot of strong opinions out there including some engineers and some of you purists out there. So, you know, I'm going to need you to strap yourself in with that there seatbelt so you don't come crawling through that monitor to come try to get at me. You hear? So before I do that, I got to say a hearty thank you to my 100 plus subscribers. I really do appreciate you guys taking the time to watch these videos and for those who have been given very constructive feedback, I do hope that it shows that with each video, with each succession, that I am taking one specific item that I can make a, a, a veritable improvement upon and integrate that with each episode as we go. So for those of you who have been patient and again, kindly constructive i am taking i am taking all that uh, into consideration and applying it where i can so thank you hopefully when you go back and see episodes one through three that say even five through eight now are going to have a different look and feel and i will continue to make some improvements in nine and ten moving forward so Thank you so much for all of that. And also, I got to say thank you to my latest round of Canadian viewers and my UK viewers. Guys over in the UK, thank you so much. Yet again, you proved that you guys have way more resilience and attention spans compared to the US. I'm talking to you, America. You right there. What the hell is wrong with your attention span? Anyway, uh, yeah, episode eight. I'm going to be attacking the good old boys club today, guys. So it's important that you understand that I had to break this down into a different, into a bunch of different categories. And this may even have to become a series because while I've gone through this material a number of times the last few days, my brain's ready to explode. I just can't take any more information. And so I had to come up with this chart, this analogy right here that we're going to be talking about today. And it's basically, I had to break down the good old boys club and what I see is harmful attacks on others and not helpful for converting new audiophiles and new two channel listeners just basically music lovers in general who are looking to move upstream from the, the MP3 players, the old iPods for those that still have them around, and then obviously a lot of the digital formats of downloading on their iPhones and Android uh, applications. So first things first, we all enjoy music. Those of us who are listening to music, it is a place of joy for us. It could even be considered a religion for us. So music is a religion. It's a place of joy. Now the formats I'm saying are part of a church. Got a bunch of different formats out there, which translates into the different denominations, which is the playback equipment. Now this shouldn't be so hard for some of you to build a to piece these things together and see the dotted lines, because the masses out there, the public, the masses, Spotify is king. Spotify is, is the download king right now, 2020. They definitely have the attention of everybody else and the, the um, not the consistency, but the um, application and the ease with which it brings people into that format. They are the kings right now. They're the download kings. So. Spotify is for the masses. Now, as you get more segregated and more into these niche groups, the playback equipment becomes those denominations. And you have your, you have your audio, obvious vinyl folks. 
They don't want to hear anything else if it ain't on vinyl. You've got your, your CD player folks. You got your SA CD player folks, and you continue to get more branched off into smaller and smaller niches within niches. You've got your multi-channel DVD folks. You've got your NAS folks. You've got all kinds of different formats out there that for some, they proselytize that as the one true way to listen and the only way to listen to music. And for all those out there that say Spotify sucks and Spotify this and what's the point of having a great hi-fi audio system if you're only using Spotify. Be careful for those of you with your big channels, your big viewership, those who are still writing for other publications out there. Why is it necessary for you to say that your format is the one true format to enlightened music joy? And that's where I come up with the Pierce and the Engineers. You guys I'm going to liken to the clergy and the magi. And here I am, I'm going to be the heretic to call you guys out and say that you're doing damage to the audiophile name and the audiophile world and basically uh, uh, folks wanting to step up and spend more money to piece together a better system so that they can appreciate the nuance that's in their favorite songs and with their favorite artists. That brings me back to why I'm the heretic. So in researching why the SACD failed so miserably once again, I had forgotten what I had known from back in the 2000s when this format came out and there were already engineers saying, hold the phone, this is BS. What Sony and Philips is doing is they're trying to create cheaper players because of the one bit technology that's in them. So I, I can't even begin to get into the math. Here, here's, where, here's where my contention lays. Once again, going back to the attacks. So there were immediate engineers to come out and for some good reasons and some bad reasons, they just wanted to crush Sony and Philips right, right at the get go to say that's an improper format. It is, not, it is not a good way to transfer music because of this complicated dithering uh, um, mathematics or you know dithering situation. And it was flawed from the get go. So don't, don't let it see the light of day. Now, that is in conjunction with other companies working on the DVD audio and doing 5.1, 7.1 channel audio and the, the issues with how do you convert old master tapes that were never designed to do multi-channel listening, to, to, to be able to break those out from a master tape to multi-channel format. So I get that and I'm agreement that part doesn't make sense to me. How could you do that? Now when there's there's modern recordings where you can start off with doing in multi-channel, nobody's going to disagree that that makes sense when you start from multi-channel today with the recordings. But anything that's old, you know, I mean Led Zeppelin, Madman, Pink Floyd, all that, you can't make happen what doesn't exist on those old master tapes. But what frustrates me is that there are very smart engineers out there, and one in particular who has a website or a blog that's just dedicated to trashing high res, trashing manufacturers that are going after the high res. I, I agree with him with, when he talks about the manufacturers out there of particular products that are trying to capitalize on what doesn't exist with the old two channel ma with the old two track mastering tapes. And the story goes is that you have cable companies, you have he even goes after Amazon HD and let me just say it's um, it's Dr. Mark Waldrop of uh, realhdaudio.com. So the, the man in his own right, he knows what he's talking about when it comes to the conversion process to know exactly what goes into a Red Book CD, but he spends a lot of time and he'll, he admits it. I will put links in the description box for you to, to a real HD audio website, but there are so many blogs where he is 
attacking the, the, the premise of high res files and why guys like me and gals out there cannot arguably hear a difference from a properly set up Redbook CD versus a high res file that's downloaded or listened or streamed from Amazon HD, let alone uh, listening to an SACD. As I was saying about Dr. Mark Waldrop, and his attacks on folks who say that they can hear the differences between the Red Book CDs, high definition streaming, and the SACDs. Here, here's my take. Madman across the water. This is this is a, a new SACD, first time I've ever listened to it in this past week. I can't imagine how many different versions different copies, different formulas, different formats, different bit rates over the years that I've heard of Madman Across the Water. It's one of my favorite Elton John tracks and it's definitely one of those tracks that when I go to friends homes I use that to differentiate or hear the differences in what they've done with their own sound system. And it's just it has it has a lot of dynamic range and then there's the the energy changes throughout the song and its progressions that allow me to hear different things I'm familiar with. So in my own system, I, I listen to the Spotify version, I listen to the Redbook version, and I listen to my SACD player. And here, here's, here's my take. So as I've said in, in another episode, you've got Spotify, and this is the picture format, this is the camera analogy. You're listening to, you're listening to your favorite song in Spotify, and for those who are the uninitiated, you've got a letterbox and it's cutting part of the picture out that you can't see. Sounds good, everything's there, there's the energy in the music, but what you're not seeing is this letterbox that's truncated the format. It's 320 kilobits per second. So there are pieces of it that you're just not gonna hear because they had to roll off with the highs and cut some of the bits out here and that's just the way it is. When you go to the Red Book CD and you got a proper 16-bit 44 hertz channel going on, all of a sudden the letterbox opens up. You see more of the background. You see what's going on out the outside of that earlier picture. It's just there's more that you can see, period, which translates to more that you can hear from the audio spectrum and that's undeniable it has to be undeniable in the fact of the bit rate and what's possible so with the human hearing where i agree with the engineers nobody's saying that anybody has super super awesome hearing that goes beyond 20k it's just not possible we hear down to 20 hertz you feel below 20 hertz. The body can feel the vibrations, the sound vibrations below 20 hertz. 18 hertz below is pretty much inaudible. Same with 20 kilohertz. Once you get past 20 kilohertz, you are no longer hearing that sound signal. Yet, I would proffer that there's energy being released. There is sound waves being released by that higher level kilohertz there has to be transference. Those sound waves are going somewhere and our bodies are absorbing that to an extent. Then there's the SACD. So with its vastly different um, dithering process in how, in how it is transferred from the analog to the digital, this is how I liken what I heard in these two discs and what I heard in Mad Men. It's like when I first put in that ModWrite 9.0 SWL tube preamp into my system. And I gotta go back to, you know, photography and cameras. It changes the color of the picture. What you're hearing are different hues within the spectrum. So you've got the same picture, the same background, but what's happened is, is some of the brightness has been muted. Some of the other colors are a little bit warmer and a little bit more vibrant. 
and there's just a, a smoother, more pleasant um, presentation of the picture. When I listen to these two SACDs, what I didn't hear was it is as important to me as what I did here. It wasn't that things were rolled off. It was that I heard a smoother presentation. Man, man across the water to me sounded more, I have to say, analog. It sounded like I had put tubes into my system. Like all of a sudden my class A became a tube preamp and things got a little bit warmer, but I didn't lose any of the resolution, which kind of surprised me because you would think that would be an expectation. That's definitely an expectation when we go from digital to, to vacuum tube technology, but that wasn't the case here. So for me, I have to bring up, I feel like, you know, a sommelier. Here is an aside. The engineers that attack the high res, that attack the SACD, they attack the, the process of what it takes to make high res files and the whole streaming process for it to be accurate, for it to be all these things. They dismiss folks that have listened for years to the same song and they've acquired a certain taste for certain songs. So when you have a sommelier that is trained for years to pair wines with particular foods, they go through a lengthy process of, of learning how to ascribe and subscribe different tastes, different textures, different aromas. They, they prepare their palate to distinguish this wine was in an oak in an oak barrel. This wine was in a, a mahogany barrel, etc., etc. Sommeliers are well trained to differentiate and to know what to pair foods with alcohol. I have not ever seen, and I actually tried to find this, folks. I actually was searching through Google to see if I could find ear and nose throat specialists, doctors that throw out white papers that said it's impossible that some liaise are better or more capable than the average person of picking out what's in their wines, what berries were used, it, was it smoked, was it this? There are no white papers that I could find. So why is there such this, why are there harsh attacks on the high res community and folks that are seeing that they can hear differences? Now I'm not talking about uh, affiliated listeners. I'm talking about non-affiliated listeners. What do I mean about affiliated, non-affiliated listeners? That's me. I'm not affiliated with anything. I'm not affiliated with any particular manufacturers. I have no dog in the race with particular um, pushing particular products because I buy everything used as it is. Affiliates who are pushing cables, who are pushing high-end products, they are coming up with nomenclature to say that we are going beyond the spectrum of what's possible in your digital music. We are taking it to the next level and the engineers are rightly saying, well, that's not physically possible because here's where human hearing stops and here's where the digital playback has its limitations. We've moved all the nasties beyond 20K Hertz. And so if all the nasties are outside of those 20K Hertz, it's not going to affect the music. So, you know, your $20,000 amp and your $20,000 CD player and your $50,000 speakers, what are you talking about? The human ear is not going to be able to differentiate. However, as a non affiliate, as a non affiliate, as a sommelier, you know you can hear a difference between a fibrous wood woofer cone, uh, aluminum cone, a paper pulp cone, a poly cone, on and on and on and on. The different tweeters. Why would anybody argue that you can't hear the difference of the material of what's made for a speaker? For the DVD player, for the CD players, the ingredients that goes into those. 
We deal in nuances, folks. And for those purists that say yours is the one and only true way, for you engineers that say lamp cord is just as good as 12 gauge silver cable, there is no difference. I'm refraining from using vulgarities. Uh, yeah, I'm refraining from using vulgarities because I don't know who you are to tell certain folks like me that we can't hear those those differences in a well manicured system, in a, in a procured system that's piece by piece fitting each item into our preference or it gets omitted because we don't like it. In the digital world, there is so much nuance with each kind of release, with each kind of CD, with how it's produced by manufacturers, what it was produced from. There should be no argument that if they're using the original master tape or if they're using remastered or you know a whole other topic, the loudness wars where they just tweak the hell out of out of already badly recorded music to to make it you know where it's so trouble heavy and it's so in your face that it's unlistenable. Okay, well that's manipulated products. You can obviously hear differences. If it's a Red Book CD and it was processed through those loudness wars, you're going to hear that difference. We can hear a nuanced difference through our sound system. We're not talking about what was the original master tape. I'm going to agree with you that it had to been uh, appropriately converted from the analog to the digital. That is the most important aspect to any album that you listen to was how good was the original. Now, I would love to hear somebody system that has an original Marantz 8 track. I would love to hear a master tape of some of my favorite, uh, favorite albums. I would love to hear, you know, uh, an amazing analog vinyl setup. I've heard a few of them. It's not my thing. I will just say that there's a reason why I don't even talk about vinyl on my channel. I've got nothing against vinyl. It's just I don't have the patience for it and it's just it's absolutely not my thing. Um, can it sound just as good as any top-of-line CD player out there? Sure. I haven't heard it. I believe those of you who say that your analog system sounds better than CD players that you've heard. I believe you. Look, folks, if there's anything I want to be, it's completely transparent at all times. Last week, I said that I do my best to stay away from saying this is the best of this, this is the best of that. From using clickbait to the uh, magnitude of saying this is the best deck, this is the best speaker, whatever the case may be. There's a lot of that out there. And I'm doing what I can to avoid going down that hole. Because I, I just want to be transparent with everybody. I don't want to discount anybody else's experience. And I can only share what I say sounds good to me, better than, better what I've had in the past. With digital audio, and I think I've covered almost every aspect of what uh, digital audio is in my own journey over the years, from the mighty iPod and the original Napster files that some of them I do remember were about 108 bits, or I'm sorry, 108 kilobits per second. They were some pretty low res files, even maybe even 96. Uh, and you could hear the noise in those digital files. I want more than anything for new audio files for new music listeners in, the, in their appreciation to find folks that can take a lot of the information out there 
a lot of the misinformation and a lot of the sidetracking of this don't go down this path this is the wrong way to go you don't want to listen to your music this way i, I want to not so much debunk that as redirect into you have to be passionate about it first and foremost passion is passion is dangerous we're all very passionate about our two channel systems we're all very passionate about our favorite albums our favorite artists and what re what's the best recording out there what was the best release out there you can get so deep in the weeds on on the format you choose and the format that's pushed towards you and this resurgent of vinyl and where it comes from and how it was pressed on and on and on it goes i can more than ever appreciate that i like to piece together gear that's that's second hand because i don't fall into the same traps of those that go oh this is the newest and the shiniest because such and such manufacturer said so and then you've got the other side that wants to poo poo the um, the prices that are paid for other particular gear and that's you know again i go back to mark waldrop he uh dr mark waldrop i don't have anything against him i just take umbrage with his uh I don't appreciate when he says that people can't hear certain things and he's got this double blind test that says it's it was a 50 50 as is well 50 percent of the people could tell the difference so i don't know why you're discounting those 50 percent nevertheless let me say this and i go back to the good old boys club that i alluded to at the beginning why do we not want to share joy and passion that music brings us with our partners? How about that? Our kids. You know, while I'm not going to ever get political on this channel, I don't even like politics, there are male to female ratios in this business that are consistently troubling to me as we're supposed to be evolving the math the sciences you know why you know why aren't there more female engineers etc the same falls into the two channel music listening category where are the females in this hobby? Have we made it so hard for others to join it? We've made it so expensive. We've made it so complicated. We've made it so um, divisive, absolutely divisive. Again, with the you know your peers and your your attitudes about this is the only right way to listen to music. You know, I've, I've spent the last several years getting my wife interested into into why I do this in the two channel listening. And by golly, she listens to music she never, ever would have listened to before. I can get her to sit down with me. And there are so many albums that we appreciate together. And now with my daughter, she comes out here and man, when Led Zeppelin's playing, when Styx is playing, she loves Queen. Man, that gives me such satisfaction to see her get the enjoyment from, from that older generation of music. And that is another reason why this channel has to exist. There has to be people out there who are willing to mentor others within reason of what a good system can look like of how to achieve a good system at an, a budget that is appropriate or not even appropriate, that is comfortable. That a, a budget that is comfortable with the user looking to achieve the next level of sound quality. Is that fair enough? I hope so. 
next week I bring my wife on and I am going to it's going to be a an interview with her and I'm going to ask her some tough questions about two channel listen in general why she puts up with me as an audiophile and why she thinks there aren't more audiophile women out there I want her in her words to say what it is that may be the proverbial glass ceiling or what may be the proverbial uh, brick wall that that stops her from entertaining more of the two channel enjoyment or at least <laughs> allowing for the stack up of gear that's uh, around the apartment let alone when I had uh, a, a garage full of of speakers um, the madness that that is but nevertheless there has to be a passing of the torch Spotify is a good platform to harness and to pass that torch in the in the right direction for the right reasons let us not start off by saying no shitty format shitty format shame on you you shouldn't listen to this you shouldn't listen to that instead let's say okay that's what you're listening to that that's what you're listening to that music on that's the gear that you're using today try this have you tried this have you thought of this let's change let's change the conversation shall we let's let's stop with the the name calling and the bashing and let's build a bigger tent so that two channel and multi format can live a long and healthy life the difficulty with with wrapping wrapping this particular piece up lays in the fact that you know music as a religion there's a a supernatural aspect to how music moves us and i know that there's there's you know mathematics involved in that as well but there's also so much that cannot be explained in how the vibrations and everything affects our body affects our mood and there's just there's so much more to it that you cannot rely on just empirical evidence and say you know that's all that it's required to say that this is true or this is false our our minds our bodies our spirits don't work that way and why i had to tackle it this way is because it's it's a journey that need not be marred that need not preclude anybody along the way and, and i think that's to me is is again what's so important for this channel moving forward and others who are doing a very admirable job out there of, of trying to help others make uh, good conscious choices about what they use the kinds of equipment they use how they set it up and you know there's there's a place for the science there's a place for the mathematical equations in the in the particular room geometry setups all that stuff there's absolutely a place for here's the time for math here's the time for when you need to use very specific calculations to give you the best possible results and that's all based on you know years of evidence totally fine with that absolutely no disagreement with that whatsoever guys my only disagreement is with the attitudes my only disagreement is with um, shutting people down or shutting people up because you're so goddamn smart and you go out of your way to show people how smart you are to the point that you know they don't even they don't even want to partake of the hobby that will be another that's going to be another topic when it comes to the audio societies and the and the audiophile clubs and the uh, 
the members who use bankroll to show how awesome they are with their uh, six-figure sound systems. Anyway, another topic. Can we get a group hug? <laughs> <laughs> I just want I just want to wrap my arms around the new audio files and I want to wrap my arms around those of you who use music as your release and to uh, the, the coping mechanism that it is. Let's not let's not dissuade people from wanting to get into two channel music. So, you know, let me just wrap this up because I'm so far afield as it is already. And, uh, you know, I will get to the Denon on, a, on another time. It's, it's, a, it's the best $300 I've spent in a long time for any of my systems. So you guys deserve to get a full breakdown on what that is. But, you know, Jason Manning, your heretic for the day. Your heretic in the audio world. I believe that cables can make a difference. I believe that high quality components can make a difference. And I believe that I can hear uh, the difference in my SA CDs versus a Red Book CDs. So you, you know who you are. Go away. I ain't going anywhere. You can go away. Um, Two channel listeners, I hope I didn't lose too many of you on this one. I do appreciate, I do appreciate you tuning in. There's going to be a lots more equipment around the corner, but today wasn't about specific equipment review. Today I had to, I had to go after what I think is is a bad practice, an unfortunate practice, of trying to close the door on folks that are looking in the window, that are looking in the window uh, to what two-channel music is, and they might not like what they see right off the bat when people are, are shooing them. So uh, that's what today was all about, and I thank you for tuning in. Equipment, equipment next time. Thank you so much. You guys have a wonderful week. You guys have an absolutely Merry Christmas, and we'll, we'll circle back at another time.